Hello dear young friends, how do you do? A new book, a new look, all new chapters, new dramas, new writing skills, old was old, but new is platinum. Okay, let us start with our first lesson, which is being naked. The story is about dreams, yours and mine. I mean, about all middle class persons who always try to achieve their dreams. They have a little less, they need a little more. And the best time to revisit their dreams is always a midnight or say an alpha sleep in their superficial sleep when all the family members of middle class sleep under one roof after their dinner and all eyes are on the ceilings and they are seeing their astronomical heights which we call dreams till they sink into their theta or delta sleep. Middle class is always the backbone of any country across the world. It gives more, it gets less. This is the story of four sisters, Marx sisters. Now about the author, Louisa May Alcott, who is the author of this novel, Little Women, had published it in the year 1868 and now this novel is 150 plus year old story of a Boston suburb, a fictitious plum field. This story or novel is also considered to be a semi-autobiographical account of Madame Louisa May Alcott by the name Josephine March or simply Joe. This novel is divided into two parts. From chapters 1 to 23, it is Little Women and from chapters 24 to 47, it is Goodbyes. This novel has been staged, filmed, televised and has been radio theatre and aired several hundreds of times from 1912 to 2019 and will continue to fascinate any generations to come. This novel is of the genre coming of ages. Actually, author's family had suffered huge financial losses at their house in Concord in Massachusetts. They were not poor. They were rich once upon a time, but they had to pay debts of many of their friends, relatives and acquaintances due to which they became poor. Author's father belonged to a transcendental club which was directly associated with Ralph Waldo emotion. It was hence obvious that Louisa May Alcott must be a perfectionist. During the American Civil War from 1861 to 1865, which had witnessed more than 2 lakh casualties, Louisa had served as a nurse. She herself was an abolitionist and she was the happiest person to know and see the dissolution of confederate states and abolition of slavery. Now about the short chapter which is there in your Bharti standard 11 starting at page number 2 being neighborly. It is actually the fifth chapter of Little Women of Louisa May Alcott's novel. The story is about two families. The Marches, who live on this side of the fence in a fictitious plum field, which comprises first Margaret March or simply Mommy, the mother, Mr. Robert March, the father, and their four daughters, Meg, Joe, Beth, and Amy. This one's good enough, truly it is. They are shown as poor well, I guess it's time to people. The Actually, they were not poor, as I said. They have their family values of helping others. And they suffer poverty just because of that. That they paid the debts of their friends and acquaintances. So, these four daughters who are living on this side of the fence are very cheery, playful. They have limited resources and still they are happy. Very noisy. Father and Robert March doesn't stay at home because he is a minister, he is a scholar actually. He is a minister in the union and he always remains out. So the house is mostly shown as mommy, the mother, with four daughters, I mean these four sisters, always very happy and cheerful on this side of the fence and their house is also pale, dilapidated and worn out. Now on the other side of the fence is a stately mansion of Lawrence comprising just two members, 
first Theodore Lawrence or simply Laurie, who is very young, and his grandfather, Mr. James Lawrence. He is very strict. He is a strict disciplinarian and doesn't allow the world to enter into his house. So why do you get so angry? And they are all surrounded by large number of servants, books, doctors, and one tutor. The tutor is a very important person here. He is rather very interesting person. His name is Mr. John Drew. I will let you know about him later. Anyways, this novel has got the story of these four sisters who have been painted uniquely and a bit distinctly by Louisa May and Bob. They have their dreams, but when it comes to reality, they face the world boldly versus their fantasies. They have a very rich aunt named Marge Auntie do like to dawdle. who always says these sisters, through all these sisters that she would disinherit them Anything worth of her property is based upon her reading or twice. serve her. And Jo could not study in any school because of that because she was a businessman girl. Brigands. No good will come of it, you mark my words. Jonathan March always was a fool, already in reduced means, and off he goes, any old how. And March, he's been a hapless gull and a fool for any silly cause all his life long. You stop it, you stop it, Aunt March. He's my father, and, and anyhow, the war to save the Union is not a silly cause. Don't you use that tone to me, Josephine. Now sit down, start reading, please. Just because of that, that she had to serve March Hunt. For delight, for As a mark of protest, later you will come to know if you read the entire novel that none of the sisters was interested in oh, March Auntie's property. You and he can be sure that you'll inherit not one penny from me. That's what he's after, you know. Money. He is not. And I shall marry whom I please, just as you may leave your money to whom you please. And to mark it as a protest, one of the sisters did just the opposite of what Aunt March had suggested. You were told rational and <gasps> real. That girl or has Aunt the fortunate habit that she would disinherit her from the property. She did just the opposite, just to mark it as a protest. So, I say love cannot be hollow and dreams cannot be purchased by some dollars. Now, coming back to the story, being neighborly, Joe would always spy upon that stately mansion of Laurie. Joe? And she always believed that there is some hidden treasure inside it. Though the house is quite luxurious, it requires something more. It is dull and boring and it requires a mildest touch, in this case a woman's touch, to make it lively and more charming. Though Joe's household, as I said, was shoddy, shabby and quite bare, Lawrence Mansion was really worth watching, worth seeing from inside. And Joe always felt that Something is there inside and that lorry, that young man, is devoid of family love or society or friendship. She always wanted to enter into that particular house to see all the hidden treasures. One day, she could see the great grandfather Mr. James Lawrence negotiating his car out from that stately mansion, maybe for a long drive. She could also estimate that the house was servantless for a while. Seeing all lying clear, she took a snowball and threw it straight towards a window, lonely window, behind which she guessed Laurie was sitting and looking at March's cottage. She was right. Immediately, Laurie opened the window, they greeted each other and then they started a conversation. First, it was formal conversation 
automatically as if they had known each other for generations the conversation became so intense that they forgot that they are just neighbors and are meeting for the first or second time then the situation was apt so lori felt that he should invite joe to his house so joe said that she would seek permission from her mother and then she would come so she went to take permission from her mother meanwhile i want to tell you something about the characteristics of joe and lori both of them had got some resemblances first they did not want to be called by their original names if one was lori and another one was joe actually they were mr theodore lawrence and miss josephine march both of them had a broad outlook towards each other both of them were inquisitive they would ask a lot of questions based on their observations both of them were a little mischievous but there was one difference between both of them lori was bashful you may say shy his personality was like he was introvert whereas joe was extrovert though she was quite friendly but she was very joe was extrovert and that particular difference in their personalities gave a totally different turn to the climax of the novel time and time again i am using this particular word novel because i am giving you a total picture and not just a small chapter of your yoga bharti book i want to experience something besides the dumb old things i'm supposed to do be a lady and stitch samplers you were spying on me from in here oh lord now joe joe now what did the newspaper say <sighs> unless you get a clear idea of the characters easy. especially the main character they're not enjoying this I... and also i would like to introduce no, the four me. sisters the eldest one was meg who was very beautiful and was more savvy about the affairs of heart intuitions she was appointed as a governess in king's family a very rich family and she always considered herself to be belonging to an elite society and she had her dreams to be like them to earn like them to marry a person like kings but later i would let you know whom she married it is a totally different story a little bit later i will let you know next is jo or josephine march you know much about her she is tomboyish extrovert she needs to control her anger and emotions she meets people with great warmth and enthusiasm later on you will find in the novel that she became very prosperous writer she became an eminent writer and she earned fortunes by writing though she didn't attend any school but she was always fond of books the third is bet who is always shown as a small child carrying her toys and dolls in a basket unfortunately she died because she contracted a scarlet fever when she was just 19 years of age and the last but not the least is any she is the only one who studied in school and she was very beautiful had brown curly hair blue eyes and she was quite artistic and she had a passion for that at last you will see if you read the novel that her self expression was so beautiful that she succeeded and excelled in all the spheres now coming back to the story now jo has taken permission from mother and she knocked at the door of mr lorry mr lorry opened the door sure jo was inside i had my fill of lessons come on along with her there was blamonch pudding the sweet dish which meg had prepared she also brought the kittens of beth she also brought good wishes of mom you certainly don't need they sat together they interacted they chatted a lot about everything about them siblings about you called cold the other night and they chatted at length and gradually joe could find out that lori was 
knowing everything about March family, especially about the four sisters. She was surprised how he came to know about all this. At that point in time, Laurie confessed that he lacked familial love and sibling affection because he was all alone. Actually, Mr. James Lawrence, the grandfather, was a very strict disciplinarian. He would not allow the outside world to enter into his house's mansion. It was only that tutor, Mr. John Brooke, who was the connecting link for Mr. Lorry between him and the outside world. He had lost, I mean, Lorry had lost his parents in an accident. So, grandfather would take extra care and would keep that grandson quite secure and would not allow others to come into his mansion. So, Lori was suffering from that particular love. He wanted that because he was devoid of that familial love. And he also confessed that he would watch the Mars sisters from his window, behind the curtains, hiding. And he always wished that he would come there and join them. Joe became quite emotional, but it was like extending warmth. She said, they promised March's curtains would never draw for Mr. Lorry and he could see March's family from his window to, the, to his heart's content. They were after all neighbours and it is their duty that they should care and share. Lorry was very much impressed. He was more impressed when he saw Joe straightening the furniture pieces and keeping the upholstery on in apple pie order and she and this made Laurie very much surprised. Then Laurie asked Joe about her studies and education to which Joe gloomily replied that she was a businessman girl and she would never go to school. She narrated everything about Aunt March and how they would wait on her. This made the entire scene a bit gloomier but then gradually she also shared certain comic movements of March Aunt after which they laughed and laughed and laughed. Laurie also shared about his schooling that one Mr. John Brooke was the only connecting link between the outer world no need, and him and he only used to teach I can go much more the entire thing about besides, the world. I, uh, John Brooke it's my father's is an amazing character that I will family. let you know a little while later. Need your assistance, oh. though, Mr. Lawrence, to As up I said, Jo was very fond of books and she knew that Mr. Laurie had got a very big library. She requested Laurie that she would like to visit his library. Laurie was happy enough and both of them moved towards the library. All the world's books were lying there. Just when Laurie left, Joe was all alone. She was enjoying the books surrounding her. At that time, she noticed a beautiful portrait of great-grandfather Mr. James Lawrence. She went towards that portrait. Oh, he should frown. It Still, his eyes towards. are kind. Bethy was a frainy mm, cat. This man, I'd like him, I'm sure of it. Thank you, ma'am. Looks kind enough. And I'll try my I'm best. I'm not afraid never... of this man. He's kind, but he has tremendous will upon himself. Secondly, he is not as handsome as my grandfather. Still. I like him. So while this soliloquy was going on, Perhaps he thinks he's doing she didn't notice the great grandfather, the real Mr. James Lawrence, entered into the library and he was just standing behind Joe and was eavesdropping on soliloquy of Joe and interrupted her politely. Thank you, madam. Joe blushed. She wanted to run away, but it would be an act of cowardice. So she remained still stronger. The great grandfather inquired from her. So you are not afraid of me? No, I am not. And that I have tremendous will. To which Jo replied, she felt so. And that you still like me? Yes, sir. 
The great grandfather was very much impressed by this answer. He further asked how her mother, mommy, was and about the Hamal family. She replied very decently. That conversation went on for some time. At last, Mr. James Lawrence asked her what she was doing, what she had been doing here in his library, to which Joe gave a very beautiful answer. Sir, she had been trying to be neighborly. Great grandfather was very much impressed by this answer and he invited Joe for a cup of tea. So this is how the story ends and gives us three to four themes. The first and the foremost is being neighborly. Living in a megapolitan city or metropolitan city or semi-towns or cities, we sometimes forget neighbors first. Charity begins from home. The next home is our neighbors. So with these Swachata Abhyan or different drives which go on and awareness schemes or different programs which go on, it should start with caring and sharing with our neighbors. Second theme is stronger one in which each and every character is shown unique and distinct. You cannot glue each and every character as chip of the same or the old block. They pursue their dreams, they meet them, they strive to achieve them and they achieve them. The thesis is concerned. The third theme is coming of age, especially women emancipation, empowerment after the war, American Civil War, when the women have been portrayed as bold, equally with the poor as well as the rich. Third and the foremost is doing charity. Though Marsh family was poor, they never forgot to do charity. Especially in this case, there was a mention about Hummel family. Hummel family is a German family comprising a widow and six children who are very poor and live on the donations of the charity done by the Marsh family. So this is how and it clearly proves that charity is something if we do there will be wealth redistribution and there will be no poor in this world. The fourth and the most important theme is love cannot be hollow. Marsh aunt always threatened the Marsh sister to disinherit them of her property if they didn't wait upon her or if they didn't follow her advices or instructions or commands. To mark it as a protest, they did just the opposite. And no one wanted her property, which clearly shows the dream cannot be bought by money. Now, it is time to break some suspense. The first and the foremost is who married whom. So the first and the quite obvious couple God-made couple must be Joe and Laurie, right? Am I right? Yes, I am. No. Unfortunately, no. Joe was married to a middle-aged German professor, Mr. Frederick Bell. They had two children, Robin and Teddy. Yeah, in fact, in fact, Laurie wanted to marry Joe. But I told you just a little while ago, Joe was extrovert, Laurie was bashful and introvert. Laurie misread the emotions of Joe and proposed her, to which Joe outrightly rejected him because he never considered Laurie to be her soulmate. This left Laurie dejected, upset, surprised and shocked. But Joe was just doing a favor of being neighborly. Okay, it means that Laurie was not married to Joe. Then was it the eldest one, Meg? No, again. But Meg was beautiful and she always wanted to marry some rich person as she believed herself to be belonging to elite society. So there must be a rich person with whom Meg was married. Unfortunately, no. She was married to John Brooke, the tutor of Laurie. Do you remember that tutor I told he was a connecting link between the entire world and Laurie. He was in love with Meg. Earlier Meg was not in love with John Brooke. And Aunt March also warned Meg if she married that person, she would disinherit her from the property. Oh, 
I'm sorry, Lieutenant. What was it you... You and he can be sure that you'll inherit not one penny from me. That's what he's after, you know. Money. He is not. And I shall marry whom I please, just as you may leave your money to whom you please. To mark this as a protest, she married John Brooke, but then she started loving John Brooke and they had two children, twins, Daisy and Demi. Hmm, then who? I mean, Laurie married Beth, but I told Beth contracted scarlet fever and she died at the age of 19. Then do you mean Amy, the youngest one? Yeah, Laurie was married to Amy. Actually, Laurie had proposed to Joe and Joe had rejected the offer after which he was very much upset and he went on a Europe tour where he met Amy who was on Europe tour with her aunt. Amy served as a calm balm upon Laurie and they fell in love, they married and they had one daughter Beth on the name of the third sister. This is how the story ends. And now the last suspense. Then who did Aunt March bequeath her property? It was Josephine March or Joe. So this is how the story ends. Before I say goodbye to you, I would like to pronounce some words, some difficult words which are there in the chapter, which are like this. The first one is SAC, S-A-C-Q-U-E. It is actually a short jacket, especially one fashionable in the late 17th and 18th century. The next is Avonhill, a historical novel by Sir Walter Scott, first published in 1890. The next, betokening, to be a token or sign of. Hidden glories, in this case, the luxury in Laurie's mansion. As dull as tombs, a figure of speech simile, which means as still as a graveyard. A little gentleman. As most of the boys do before meeting their guests and friends, I hope you understand what I mean. Thora style and Thora swag. Blemange. It is a sweet dish made with flavored corn flour and milk. We generally call it pudding. Then bashfulness. Socially shy. Opposite in aggression or confidence. Pranced. To move with quick high steps. As happy as a cricket. Simile. It is a simile. Meaning merrily and happily. Good luck. So read the story being neighborly once again, now you won't face any problem. After reading this you will connect all the dots and you will enjoy the story in a better way. Here I have used a few video clips of Little Women Teleplay 8 directed by Sir David Lowell Rich. My intention of using it or these video clips is for educational purpose. Thank you. Aviento. Goodbye.